Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this commentated fight which took place in Malaysia in the Gift Vanguard Championship. So this was just from this past weekend, so it does feature the new AL4 clans, and I do realize that I've been a bit late on uh, getting content out for them, but that's because I just came back from holidays on last, well, Friday night actually. So it's been a little bit slow, but do bear with me. I have regionals in London coming up this weekend, and after that I'm going to jump back on the content really quick, so don't worry too much. Anyway, on the left side we have Joshua Rakesh and on the right side we have Joshua Lee. So the battle of the Joshuas, one of them using the newly supported and very popular Shadow Paladin and then the other one using the tried and tested OTT. So we can see that Joshua had his first turn of just going into the Nightmare Painter and then, you know, just setting up his Nemains, which is a really good play. You want to get those Nemains down on turn one and then over every turn after that, just thin out the deck of those Nemains because that way you're thinning out the deck really quickly, hitting your triggers faster, and also having really good retire fodder for that immediate PBD action. So, we can see that uh, Joshua Lee, however, did use the Luckbird and he got himself the 11k Luckbird on there. And now, uh, because of the one defensive trigger that Joshua hit, which was the draw trigger, uh, the other attacks of Joshua Lee don't actually hit. I, I usually tend to refer by first names to the players on, on, on the commentaries, but that's really not going to fly this time, is it? So Joshua Rakesh goes into the Maka, which is a pretty good play, because now he can count bust one and call out any grade one. First, before that, he's going to use the Nemain, which is the good move here, because that way, since Maka gives you the extra draw, you want to thin your deck out as much as possible to make sure that you don't draw into another Nemain, for example. You want to draw into some of your other cards, like, let's say you still need a PBD. Let's say you might need another grade 1 to call for Maka, you know, that kind of thing. So you want to thin that deck first as much as possible, just to maximize the kind of, you know, good targets that you can hit with your Maka skill. So... You can see he also has the Origin Rare Maka in his hand. I wonder why he didn't ride it. You know, it's an early chance to, you know, flex a little bit, but I guess he didn't want to take it. He calls down the uh, Lancer, I like to call. Uh, not not the Blaster uh, Lance, but the Lancer is in the Fate Lancer, because I swear to God, that guy's art is literally Lancer. Um, so he doesn't use Maka, actually, and instead... He went for the Blaster Dark, which is quite interesting, and he didn't choose to ride into the Blaster Dark either, so that way he doesn't get himself an extra drive check, but in standard it's more of a, it's not so important at all times. So it's quite an interesting play that he chose to not use the Maka here, but I think maybe he didn't have any grade ones in hand, maybe he was actually trying to, you know, um, well, like, it's just possible that he didn't have any great ones in hand, and that's what, what it meant. And then he does get the heal, but, you know, uh, Joshua Rakesh can still hit the um, Sotori Hime, and that means it's all good. So, Mr. Lee goes into the Imperial Daughter, gives himself a Protect Marker, and can now also set up the top of the deck or the soul, as well as his hand. Also, I didn't actually mention, but the Lancer card, as I like to mention it, gains power for each rear guard you have more than your opponent. So, you know, right now he's got a full board, so that guy's going to be swinging for pretty big numbers. And I think actually going for the retire was the good play there, because even if it's just a 5k, you know, having Joshua Lee lose that Lockbird is pretty big as well. Ooh, he hits the crit which is fairly big, but also not the biggest deal to Rakesh, just because um, this allows him to make different kinds of plays the next turn, because he'll have two open count blast for his, um, you know, just for his strategies. So we'll see how he decides to move. His hand is looking pretty good. If he goes for, if he goes for, for, for a Phantom Blaster Dragon, you know, he could, you know, it's, it's not going to be very big pressure, just because of the fact that uh, he's redoing his guarding because he dropped the 15k shield but then I think he realized that he wanted um, to fill up his board next turn so he was like well you know I kinda I kinda don't need to guard it like that and then he realized that actually because of the force versus protect numbers he could just guard with a 10k so he did a double intercept instead he does go with it for the car though so that's quite interesting I don't know if he has PBD in hand or not but the fact that he went for the card does mean that he can get himself a free call, basically, for Soul Blast 1. He used the Blaster Dark to get rid of the Meme, which is also quite good. And now he can Soul Blast 1 to check the top card and either call it or retire or drop it immediately. But he does call it Insta Blaster Dark, which is actually pretty good. So Blaster Dark will get a 5k buff, but uh, Car Skill does say that at the end of the turn, you have to retire the unit that was called with a skill. 
and so that blaster dark isn't going to be there to stay. So it's it's especially good with your you know your Bl final blaster dragon turns because you can retire uh, the thing that you call with car before it actually gets retired by its own skills. So that's quite nice. And so we can see that you know he had a pretty good drive check. He get, got himself a heal, which is obviously n almost never a bad thing, you know, unless you're playing uh, bean fight. So he goes into the Amaterasu, so he doesn't stay on the Imperial Daughter. There's not much point. I mean, even if you get get another Imperial Daughter, you'd rather ride into her again. So I think you know th that's not a wrong play, and he can stack up some power on Amaterasu as well. So that's already a plus 10k buff. I like how he puts down his protect markers just on the mat. That way, that you know, there's not much ways to be uh, confused on how many there are. So that's quite nice. On oh, now, Rakesh was reminded that the Blaster Dark needs to be retired before you know you even go into the battle phase or even into Lee's turn. So that's something to you know just remember when you're playing Shadow Paladin that Car does have to retire something at the end of turn, regardless. So. Now, uh, Joshua Lee is attacking with a 22k Amaterasu, this is a 32k, 32k shield, and, or is it? I believe it's a 22k, oh yeah, so he blocks with 33, so it's then 2 to pass, right, that doesn't make sense. And then Lee does hit the triggers onto that meme, so now, for Rakesh, I think it's still fairly safe to take this, I think. It's not that big of a deal, and on top of that, you know, if he does have... You know, if he top decks the PBD or anything like that, he has some pressure, but the Promised Daughter is there, which makes this matchup a little bit harder for Rakesh. And in general, people do often say that the OTT matchup is the worst that Shadow Paladin has, but I think by saying that a lot of people forget that Shadow Paladin is still a really good clan, just because of all the raw advantage that it can generate. We can see that Rakesh whips out that nice Umu Force Marker, uh, so I, I noticed when I, when I saw the pictures of the deck profiles from this tournament, that um, the winning team um, had, you know, or I believe it was teams, I'm pretty sure, uh, they actually had the, uh, like, Fate, well, Fate Grand Order styled Force, well, not just Force, Force, Axel, and Protect Markers, so I think we'll see a few more of those in this game, uh, but, you know, there was the first one, so he does, uh, he got, I believe, the crit with the car, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, yeah, he put the plus 5k on it too, so he's gonna get retired at the end of turn, you know, there's usually not much reason to not call the thing that you get with the carb just because, you know, it, event, essentially you'd rather have even a 5k booster than, you know, just immediately send it to drop. Unless you have like a perfect full field, but then I wouldn't use the skill to begin with, unless you're playing Ritual. So, we can see he's going to be attacking with the, um, the Trumpeter, who does have a 5k buff. It's kind of funny how... We didn't get the Royal Paladin Trumpeter in in the reboots, but we got the Shadow Paladin one. So, you know, maybe they'll maybe they'll print the Royal Paladin one as another crit for Royals. You know, like in the upcoming uh, mini booster. But we'll see about that. And so now he's attacking with, if I'm not mistaken, that's a 25k attack. It might be 35. I'm not sure where he distributed his triggers. And then attacks with the uh, Lancer. I, I forget the the guy's actual name, so I refer to him as Lancer this whole time. But he attacks with him. He gets the extra damage because he's just scaling in power uh, due to how full his board is. So, you know, there's always that. So, goes into the Amaterasu and does continue to set up his hand. We can see that Joshua Lee's hand is still massive, you know. Like Rakesh, he has massive board presence and very consistent board presence in, this, in the fact that, you know, basically everything has been called, you know, from the deck in some way or another, except for the Lancer. You know, the crit was called from the car. The Nemains were called by their own effects. We can see the uh, last Nemain sadly in the damage zone. So that's the other reason why you want to call Nemain turn 1 and start deck thinning really fast because you either draw into them or you damage them or you, you drive check them. So you really just want to call them out as fast as possible before you can hit them in your hand. So it's worth to consider that and that's, you know, but it, regardless, it's still an amazing card and definitely very worth to use. And I think some people, a lot of people actually, play one of the... Um, the draw triggers, not the perfect art draw triggers, but the 5k shield draw triggers, just because you can technically just search it out with an main if you really need that 5k booster, but we can see that Rakesh has a consistent back row this whole game, so he doesn't really feel a need for that, so looks like he's gonna 2 to pass, or no, he's just gonna let it slide, so there's a draw trigger coming through, and a Farfai Magus, 
and then he gets himself the draw that I was just talking about, so there we go. And I think he drew into another Phantom Blaster Dragon, so we saw he, he dro drove check one last turn, so that does mean that, you know, we can kind of see where this next turn is going, and I think that's quite nice because the Promised Daughter is gone. He has a double Meme, the uh, Luckbird, and the Gemini on board, so I think that just, you know, seeing that, that probably makes Rakesh want to go for that PBD really soon, just because he can actually hit Joshua Lee's board really hard. So let's see what he's going to choose to do, and he does ride into that Phantom Blaster Dragon. And I think that's a Jean Alter Force Marker that he just put down. I mean, I, I know since I saw the pictures, but yeah. So he's going to call the car and Soul Blast 1. He's going to Soul Blast the starter. Yeah, well, it is the John Halter. And he gets himself... Ooh, the Karen. That is really big because Karen's skill is... Apologies. Uh, his skill is that when he's called by an effect... So it doesn't have to be called from hand. It can be called from anywhere. When he's called by an effect, you Soul Blast 1 to Counter Charge 1, which is really nice. So... I was going to use the damned Charging Lance to retire three of his own rearguards and then retire three of his opponents, leaving just the Meme there. Now if he has a Blaster Dark, he can actually get rid of the entire board. It doesn't seem like it though. He does call down another Lancer. I think that's the third one of this game, and I think most people just run three. I think um, I'm planning on doing the deck preview for Shadows first from the VBTO2 decks, and I'm also planning to run three. But, ooh, that's a bit of a shame that he doesn't actually have the Blaster Dark to retire that last Meme, because then he could have actually dealt that extra damage from Phantom Blaster Dragon's skill, and I think this might be a pretty big deciding factor, because he did... We saw that he drive-checked Blaster Dark earlier, I think, or he had one in hand that he potentially could have used, but I guess he either had to guard with it, or he just didn't value it as high. But I think, you know, right now, when he has two extra counter blasts, he could have easily, you know, just done that. So we can see that Joshua Lee was grabbing his head <laughs> because the Imperial Daughter hit the damage zone. That is quite unfortunate. I think that's part of the reason why this matchup is so hard right now for Joshua Lee is because even though, you know, he didn't have the the Imperial Daughter, he also doesn't seem to have promised daughters to negate at least part of Phantom Blaster Dragon's skill or Phantom Blaster Dragon's win con of getting rid of your units and then dealing you one extra damage. So it's a bit unfortunate, not gonna lie. So he calls down the Farfai Magus, checks the top card, Amaterasu gets another 5k buff, so that's at 10k right now, so 22k base. I think he's just asking for powers, uh, and also, oh yeah, and also I think uh, Joshua Lee was asking if the car called out the Lancer, but it was actually that the car called out the Karen from last turn, so there's no retiring happening now. He can keep his Interceptor as he initially planned. So. We'll see how this uh, the remainder of this match does pace out. Uh, I think they're just checking power numbers, but this should be a 22, so a 20k guard will be a 2 to pass as expected. Checking the powers, they should normally be base power, so 8k and 9k respectively. So he's going to have to hit some triggers to let... thing is, you have to think about it this way. Joshua Lee needs to hit triggers in order to let his rearguards hit. So if Rakesh does double, you know, 2 to pass, then you know, he might as well just hit all on Vanguard because he's either pumping up small attackers to hit for 10k shield or he's forcing out a damage by just all inning. And he hasn't hit that many triggers either yet, I think. You know, we saw him hit a heal, we saw him hit a crit or two, and, you know, we saw him hit a draw or two, but we haven't seen him hit all that many triggers, so I think Rakesh needs to be a bit careful and potentially perfect guard this attack, or at least no pass it, because it's just going to get a bit scarier. But it looks like he doesn't even... He doesn't even guard it, so he lets it through, he gets himself the heal, and we can see another um, grade 1 hitting Rakesh's damage zone. So this is going to be hitting for 18. Now Joshua Lee needs to consider, this is more worth to hit the rearguards, I think, but oh, no, 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 he's hitting the vanguard. So the reason why I said that is because Rakesh is still on 4 damage, and I feel like um, since, if I'm not mistaken, Kar's effect is an act, um, if he doesn't have another car in hand, which he cannot, because I think, well, if he plays four, he can potentially have one more left, because he rode into two, two of them, and he called one, so I think, you know, that's why I'm thinking that, you know, normally he would just go for the car, because that's an extra card that you can get for essentially just like one soul blast, which the deck can regenerate with Nightmare Painter, and that's what makes it such an important card, but... 
it's an interesting choice to hit the Vanguard, but then Rakesh uh, led it through anyway, and he got it with a Nightmare Painter, which I mentioned is the thing that helps you with that solo that you need for the car. So that's an interesting choice, and we can see that, you know, Rakesh has already ridden four times. He has four Force Markers set up on the board, two of them on the car, one on the Lancer and one on the Vanguard, so pretty good distribution so far, I think. You can only ride so much, like even a trial deck doesn't come with three of them, but he still has enough of the custom Fig Grand Order, uh, the Force Markers, to keep on going. But I think what Rakesh is considering is, you know, with the Final Boxer Dragon, he needs potentially one more card, but on top of that, if he wants to take advantage of the Lancer, ooh, that's an interesting choice. So he's going to rest the Nemain. He knows that he doesn't have any more left in deck. I think he doesn't have any more draw triggers left in deck, so he does have to call down a crit, which is both a crit you lose from the deck and a 15k shield you lose from your hand, potentially. You know, so that's that's pretty big, but I can see why he would do that, because he runs the Howl Owl, I think it's called, uh, the draw trigger, I think once or twice, I believe twice. We've seen it in the damage zone too. Yeah, he runs two of them, and then he runs, you know, the four in the mains, obviously. So I think in these kind of situations, that's the only time when you would consider, you know, actually using the main to get yourself uh, any other kind of trigger. But we can see that Joshua Lee gets quite lucky. He gets the draw trigger on that force damage by the Final Blaster Dragon. So you can see that, you know, Shadows can still use their skills against OTT. You know, it just means that, you know, the OTT player can't hit their Promise Daughters. Rakesh does get a bit of a dry uh, drive check in no triggers whatsoever, but these are still two pretty strong attacks coming through. So, the Lancer is, is buffed up by extra power because he has two more rearguards than his opponent, and then uh, we also have the car being, you know, double forced essentially. And, ooh, but Joshua Lee, he guards that perfectly fine thanks to that extra draw trigger that hit his damage. And now he does get himself the Imperial Daughter, finally, putting one card in hand and one card on the top of the deck. His hand is still very healthy, you know, he's gone through two Phantom Blaster Dragon skills, so that's technically, well, he only retired two cards last turn, so that's five retires that have been forced that other clans wouldn't be doing as much. And then on top of that, you know, he's got all these attacks to guard against. You know, he guarded everything, ex uh, pretty much everything except, well, he had to guard everything last turn, but he did take the one compulsory damage from the Final Blaster Dragon skill, and then he still had to guard previously against the Final Blaster, and just in general, it's like so much pressure to put up with, but his hand is still looking so good, so, you know, we've seen Joshua Lee on these commentated fights before, you know, he seems to hit the top tables in Malaysia really consistently, and you know, I'm not surprised seeing him here either. Rakesh is also a very, you know, just good player that's already accomplished a lot, so these are both really good players, and you know, they're not the only famous Joshua's from the region, you know, we still have more of them, but it's pretty, pretty interesting how this matchup has been going on, because I think, you know, people always say that the OTT matchup for Shadows is the nightmare, This it, it doesn't get worse, Every other client it can do well against, except for Shadows, but right now we can see that Rakesh isn't really struggling, but then at the same time, Joshua Lee is also doing pretty fine against the matchup too, even though, you know, he's been drawing kind of dead. He doesn't have Promised Daughters, you know, he had to first write Imperial Daughter, and then it took him so many turns to draw into the second one, so there's some things to consider, but we do know from, you know, his hand shuffling that he does have a Deer in hand, which means he could potentially use it now, because the reason why I say that is we have Rakesh on 4 damage already. That's usually the pressure point at which you kind of don't want to mess with, um, you know, with <laughs> the deer anymore. And I think, you know, I'm pretty sure he still has the deer. Some players have been running deer at 3 copies these days, just because, like, you can technically do... Because it's not a, it's not a named once per turn, like Nemain. It's just, like, once per turn per card, so if you have 2 deers, you can technically do it twice. But you're still, like, if you hit two crits on the first one, you're still gonna have the same two crits on the second one, but you're just gonna get a 20k buff on your field, so it's pretty scary because, you know, you, you only really have four perfect cards to work with, so it only goes so far. This is an interesting turn of events, though, from Joshua Lee. He does call down the Psychic Bird. So this is a 13k line, which with a 6k buff could be a 19k line, which... He does Soul Blast, and he Soul Blasts the Great 3 too, and he does put it on the Psychic Bird. That's very interesting, because 
you're not really hitting any 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 kind of magic numbers against force clans because this is what a 19k attack so it's not hitting 20 against the grade 2 either that's kind of interesting but we'll see how that pans out so Rakesh does perfect guard this one obviously because the Imperial Daughter does have the crit on her too but that's quite interesting so he's choosing what to discard right now I think you know, Rakesh's hand it looks pretty big but I guess it's not okay so he discards the Javelin and then, ooh, the crit comes down, which he already knew about because he left it on top with the Imperial, and he checked it again with the Farfai, and then that's just going to be the heal trigger to guard that. So, hmm, quite interesting. I think if Rakesh can top deck a great, well, a Phantom Blaster Dragon, oh, that's going to be huge. Oh, just as I was saying that, just as I was saying that, you know, that PBD top deck is actually massive because right now, I think the reason why maybe Joshua Lee was so cautious last turn and calling his his cards and he didn't want to all in with Deer yet is because he's probably trying to just push Rakesh a little bit more, force out a few more resources, force him to call down cards to essentially 3 for 2 because I think he knew that if he forces Rakesh to 3 for 2 in the sense of having him retire 3 cards just so he can retire 2 of Joshua's it makes it slightly more worth it because now Joshua Lee's hand is massive and Rakesh cannot use Phantom Blaster's skill to you know to actually get an extra damage on Joshua Lee just because it doesn't work past four damage so this is an interesting move because I think he knows that you know he won't be taking any extra damage so just calling down a second card is pretty interesting and forcing your opponent to lose cards that way so now, will Rakesh actually use the Phantom Blaster Dragon? Because, you know, outside of the car, he hasn't been getting that many cards that generate advantage. Because he didn't use the Makas. He did use the main three times in total, actually. So that is an extra three cards that he generated, not from his hand. Ooh, he calls down the Javelin, and now he can draw an extra card and get some more power. Uh, the skill does... In English, it's a bit of a confusing skill. It got an errata, but it says if you have two... Uh, grade ones or less I think on the field then you can use it but basically when you call it already it counts towards that total whereas in Japanese it's worded a bit differently but okay so Rakesh goes for the play that I think was smarter in not actually using that uh, retire skill because I think as I said three for two when one of those two is a crit trigger is just not really worth it because then he's losing he has to commit so much from his hand just to do anything and you know he got that extra booster from the car but outside of that you know it's, it's just not worth it to overcommit like that I think so I think Rakesh made the better play and retiring the two units right now just isn't that worth it but on the other hand with him not retiring them now there's the slight problem of when the deer comes down even a 13k column becomes 33 and it can only go up with triggers so I think it was a really hard decision here for Rakesh on whether to commit and retire everything or whether to leave things as they are and just, you know, try to push with the numbers and with the damage and, you know, just try to outpace your opponent that way. But I think seeing Joshua Lee's hand, it's just hard to really come back from that because look at how much pressure Rakesh has been doing, how many, how much advantage he's been generating, you know, he even dealt the damage with Final Blaster Dragon, he's been doing all those things. But Joshua Lee is still in perfect standing, you know, his hand is still looking healthy. He's gonna guard the last attack of this turn now, you know, dropping a PG for PG, and his hand is still, you know, big enough. It's like five or six. It's just, it, it's, I'm just looking at the situation and it just looks incredible how Joshua Lee has essentially mind gained his opponent out of using the skill that, you know, just gave him so, so much advantage earlier because if Joshua Lee would have made the mistake of overcommitting with that deer last turn, it would have been such a problem because we can see now, like, he has, it looks like he has basically Exodia. He has the perfect, you know, perfect field, perfect five cards, uh, or four cards rather, to set up this board right now. But the fact that he didn't overcommit last turn, because at first I was questioning, I was like, wait, why are you calling the crit? Why are you calling the, just the far fire? Like, what, what are you trying to do here? Like, 19k column? Like, what, what is this? But now I see it. It really took me until I got to Rakesh's turn uh, to see what is actually happening. And, oh, that was really interesting. Calling the meme behind, and, like, he's kind of, like, revealing face-down cards, where... Okay, okay, I think he's 
redoing his calls, and... Well, he technically didn't call anything, so I, I guess it's fine. As, as long as Rakesh is fine with him changing where the Meme stands, I guess that's fine. Because he probably wanted to check the top card. He puts down the draw, and there's the deer, and he has one more card in hand. But he is gonna go for it immediately, and he has to discard the Soto Orihime, so that's why he had to keep that card, because... Ooh, that's also really smart, because he had eight cards left in deck. So with Meme, he checked if it, one of them was a crit, and, you know, to maximize his chances of doing the deer. God, Joshua Lee is playing so smart this game. This is actually incredible to see. This is like galaxy brain level of stuff. Wow, this is actually really fun to watch. Like, I, I have it, like, you know, sometimes I'm watching games and I'm like, oh, I can see what he's going to do, like, two or three turns ahead. But now I feel like I've been one turn behind this whole game, especially one turn behind all, all of Joshua Lee's actions, because this is just, like... It's just mind-boggling to some extent, you know, just forcing your opponent to not use something that normally nets them such an advantage because it's either gonna put them behind even more or it's just gonna, you know, be a slight disadvantage to you or delay your win con by one turn. And, you know, the fact that he saw that Joshua Rakesh had only six cards in hand also meant that he could easily go for the deer because by then the deer just gets so scary. Plus now we know that he has a double crit, like this is really scary and I think Rakesh if he doesn't have the cards needed to guard this, because this is what, 14, 24, 44k attack? And if he, he didn't use the Imperial Daughter, I think, because he only had two soul. Both of them were great threes and he needed them for the deer. So I think um, if, well, 44 is still, well, that's a 35k shield. And he's 30k shield in hand, plus the intercept. But then the other one is 20 on its own, and I think he didn't... Well, no, it's 20, 30, 50, essentially, on its own, you know, with the extra crit on both, so he has to guard both, so that's, that's it's just rough, it's just rough, like, it's, it's a lot to think about right now, so, ooh, he has to take it, and there's no heals, and that is gonna be game, so, thank you very much for watching this just massive brain match, I really enjoyed commentating, and I hope you guys enjoyed watching it too, don't forget to check out the second channel, as well as click the bell button, and check out the social medias, and join the Discord channel if you haven't already, but on that note, that's gonna be it for me today, and I'll see you guys next time, bye bye <laughs>